Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Today I am exceptionally excited. Um, you can tell on the desk in front of me right here that we do have one of the new X299 boards. Uh, the X299 is Intel's new Basin Falls platform. Uh, it's their new high-end desktop platform. Uh, and it has released with uh, not a lot of good press. Um, there's a few different things swimming around about it. Um, <clears throat> the lack of PCIe lanes for the lower end chips. Uh, you've also got two four core chips that debatably shouldn't even be on this platform. Uh, and most recently, there was a video uh, done by DeBauer, a uh, world known overclocker, about VRM temperatures and uh, boards that only have one 8 pin CPU power connector. Uh, I will link that video down in the description as well. Um, you would think that I would be excited today because we're going to do a build with X299 and I do have that coming. Uh, it'll be our first custom loop build for the channel. Uh, but the reason I'm excited today is actually because we're going to take a look at the VRM temperatures. Uh, we're going to replicate what DeBauer did and see if we get the same results. Uh, see if this is an unsafe platform uh, like he had said in his video. Um, hopeful that's not the case because like I said we will be doing a custom loop build with this hardware in the future. Uh, I do plan to use this as my daily computer for editing and everything else that I do. Uh, so hopefully we don't get those results but um, I'm ready to bring them to you no matter what they are uh, and anxious to see how this turns out. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull the 7700K off of the test bench, uh, load X299 up. We will be using a 7820X for this testing. That is their 8-core, 16-thread model. Uh, we're obviously going to do some overclocking. Uh, I do have a uh, infrared thermometer that we'll use to measure heat sink temperatures as well as some thermocouples that we'll place on the rear of the board and on the heat sink uh, just like he did in his video. So stay tuned. I think it's going to be a good one. I appreciate you guys watching. To begin, let's talk a little bit about what brought all of this on. There's a world known overclocker by the name of Roman Hartung or better known as DeBauer. Roman is not only a world known overclocker but he also works for a company called Case King that's based in Berlin, Germany. Case King offers all kinds of computer hardware, peripherals, and even computers built to order. This includes pre-overclock systems, and one of Roman's roles at Case King is testing to see what components will go well together, and in this specific case, what motherboards would be a good choice for an overclock Skylake X system. In his testing of X299, he noticed that the power draw and temperatures were much higher than he had expected. Usually you would assume we're talking about CPU core temperatures, but in this instance we're actually talking about the motherboard's VRM or power delivery temperatures. In his testing he saw temperatures above 100 C when monitoring the VRM and also noted that the VRM would throttle the CPU not only back from the overclock that he'd set, but also lower than factory clock speeds. This, as you would expect, set the internet ablaze. We're talking epic proportions, maybe comparable to Kim Kardashian's ass. All of a sudden, Threadripper seemed like it could be a really good choice and all of the AMD fanboys were screaming that Intel had really botched not only this launch, but the entire X299 platform. Personally, I freaked out for about 24 hours as I hadn't opened my 7820X yet and I knew that if I did there would be no returning it but at this point I really didn't have much of an option because I had already bought all kinds of stuff including an entire custom loop. I decided to press on in hopes that maybe my test bench would catch fire and I would at least have an epic video for all of you. Much to my surprise, it not only didn't catch fire, but the VRM temperatures are what I would consider chilly at 40 to 50 C under load. As you can see in some of the B-roll, we did the same thing as Roman and used thermocouples on the front of the heat sink as well as on the back of the board underneath where the MOSFETs are soldered. As I initially expected pre-Roman's video, the CPU itself was hot, but the VRM seemed happy as a pig in shit. 
My CPU cores, on the other hand, were topping 90C at a mere 1.22 volts. I spent a lot of time testing. We're talking days worth of testing at this point, and since then Roman has released a follow-up video, as well as another YouTuber by the name of Tom Logan, or OC3D as his channel is called. During Tom's testing, he was getting the exact same results I was. CPU temps being a bit hot, but no such massive 100C temp from the power delivery. Roman and Tom actually got in contact with each other, and Roman shared a bit more information than he had in his initial video. This is where it all starts to make sense. Since Roman has to test pre-built and pre-overclock systems that are being sold, he has to run tests using the worst case scenario. These computers are being bought by anyone who has the money, and there's no discrimination in regard to actual overclocking knowledge. This means if someone decides to take their shiny new 10-core Skylake X chip and run massive AVX-intensive workloads, it has to hold up. Roman uses Prime95 to test these systems before they leave because it is known for putting the hurt on CPUs with AVX instructions. If any of you have ever been in the UEFI of your Z or X series overclocking capable motherboard, You've definitely stumbled across a setting that allows you to set the offset you want your chip to run at when it encounters AVX loads because of how intense they are. These AVX instructions are mostly found in professional types of workloads, although they can be used here and there in more common applications. Even though most people who would be buying a pre-overclock system from Case King likely aren't going to use it for a professional workload, Roman still has to test for it. The more likely scenario is that someone without a ton of overclocking knowledge will drop several thousand dollars on one of these systems and then Google search something like how to stress your overclock, end up downloading Prime95, and if testing had not been done, it literally could have caught the entire computer on fire. That may seem like a stretch, but after testing I can corroborate that that is definitely possible under the right set of circumstances. So what does all this mean? Is the X299 platform a bust? Is your X299 rig going to catch fire and burn down your house? The answer is probably not. To get the system to draw the massive 400 plus watts Roman saw and get the VRM temperatures in the 100C range, there are a ton of safeguards that have to be overridden in the UEFI. If someone with the knowledge of these safeguards and how to set them up properly wants to do this, then they probably also know that they need to watch things like VRM temps very closely. Using X299 for something like content creation, you'll likely never see any of these issues. I have tested extensively in programs like Blender and Adobe Premiere Pro, and applications like that just do not stress the CPU enough for it to be an issue. If you're an average consumer that is looking for the fastest platform, then X299 is without a doubt the king. It comes with caveats, but most decisions in life do. If you intend to use it for professional workloads or with proprietary software that includes some of these AVX instruction sets, you may want to hold off and see if motherboard vendors come up with a solution to all of the heat being produced by the VRM, or you may want to see what AMD's new Threadripper has to offer. I'm one of those people that jump in before the pool is even full, which is why I went ahead and purchased X299. If you aren't that type of person, I would encourage you to wait and see how everything pans out. Alright guys, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, so is X299 an unsafe platform? I would say no. Under the right circumstances, yes, it could be dangerous. Uh, so what you would have to do to have it draw that much power and heat up the VRM that much is uh, he removed the overcurrent protection and upped the thermal throttle limit. He upped the TJ Max uh, on the CPU and I don't feel like that's something that most people do when they're overclocking. Yes, it, people do it and it does help uh, stabilize overclocks, uh, but I feel like that's on the more extreme side of things. Uh, so as long as you're not messing with the advanced settings uh, when you're overclocking, I see no issue with VRM temperatures. Um, you would probably also be fine with a single 8-pin for the CPU power. Um, that being said, personally, I would probably get a board with at least an 8-pin and a 4-pin. Um, overall, I'm super happy with how it performed. Uh, I was scoring 
just over 2000 in Cinebench and that was overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz on all cores. Uh, this X299 Gaming 7 from Gigabyte performed flawlessly uh, and it actually looks really good as well. So super happy with the purchase and we're going to do a custom loop in the near future with it. Uh, make sure you get subscribed for that. Check us out on social media. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.